Welcome to the ARE 5.0 video prep series brought to you by NCARB. In this video, we'll take an in-depth look at the Programming and Analysis Division. Programming and Analysis is all about evaluating the requirements, constraints, and opportunities of a project. This often requires the assessment of such issues as the client's needs, the project type, the site and its context, environmental conditions, economic issues, and code and zoning requirements. You should be able to analyze the impacts of these issues in order to recommend the program, budget, and schedule for a project, establishing both the qualitative and quantitative project requirements. The process of distilling a project's objectives into the program is an essential skill. Often, you'll communicate these ideas and requirements through adjacency and stacking diagrams, which can be the bridge between programming and planning. Topics related to project planning are covered in the project planning and design video. Be sure to review the latest ARE 5.0 guidelines and ARE 5.0 handbook, both on the NCARB website. The guidelines contain critical information about ARE 5.0 policies, including the rolling clock, scheduling a test, problems at the test center, and receiving your score. The handbook discusses the content of all six divisions and includes sample items and suggested references, as well as more information on the objectives for each division. You'll have three hours and 15 minutes to answer 95 items in this division. The content is distributed between environmental and contextual conditions, codes and regulations, site analysis and programming, and building analysis and programming. In the Environmental and Contextual Conditions section, you'll evaluate a project site and identify both the opportunities and constraints that may impact future development. Let's look at a sample question. A Parks and Recreation Society has approached an architect to construct a picnic pavilion, restroom facility, and recreational volleyball courts on a riverfront property. The client has requested the development of the site be environmentally responsive and cost effective. Click on the area of the site plan where the architect should recommend the development be located. The architect should recommend the southeastern region. The Site Planning and Design Handbook discusses site analysis, sustainability, and development principles that can be directly applied to the evaluation of this riverfront property. The southeastern area is relatively flat, limiting the amount of construction dollars dedicated to excavation and related site work. It is also located outside of the defined floodplain, reducing the potential risk of water damage to the buildings and recreational courts over time. This is an AE level item requiring you to evaluate the existing site constraints to determine which areas of the site may inhibit development. You must also determine which areas of the site present design opportunities that fulfill the client's requirements. In the Codes and Regulations section, you'll look at the codes and regulations appropriate to the initial analysis and programming phase of a project. Let's look at a sample question. An architect has been selected to complete a major interior and exterior renovation of all areas within a three-story library building. The building was constructed in the early 1980s. During the programming phase of the project, which of the following should the architect recommend to the client regarding accessibility? Only the public spaces need to be made accessible. Only the primary function spaces need to be made accessible. All areas of the library should be made accessible. Since this is a renovation of an existing building, accessibility upgrades are not required. This is the correct answer. The ADA standards for accessible design requires all altered elements and spaces within a renovation project to comply with the accessibility standards. Since this is a major renovation of all areas within the building, the architect should recommend that all areas of the library be made accessible. This is a UA level item requiring you to identify accessibility requirements that are applicable to a renovation project. In the Site Analysis and Programming section, you'll need to analyze a project site relative to the program and project requirements. Let's look at a sample question. An architect is completing a feasibility study for a small marine research facility. The following site information has been provided by the client, located in a remote area near the seashore, undeveloped except for a small storage building that will be demolished, contains a small area of wetlands adjacent to an environmentally protected area. As part of the study, what documentation should the architect evaluate? Check the four that apply. FEMA maps, geotechnical report, traffic report, structural report, Topographic Survey, Hydraulic Conditions Report. These are the correct answers. According to the Site Planning and Design Handbook, 
evaluating FEMA maps, geotechnical reports, topographic surveys, and hydraulic condition reports is critical in understanding the site's potential for coastal flooding, the makeup and stability of the soils, potential earthwork requirements, and how the presence of water and wetlands may impact development. Since this is an undeveloped and remote site, a traffic report and structural report would not be necessary for this feasibility study. This is an AE level item requiring you to analyze the site information provided and determine what documentation should be evaluated to assess the feasibility of the project. In the Building Analysis and Programming section, you'll analyze new or existing buildings relative to the program requirements, cost, and schedule. This is the largest section in the Programming and Analysis division. Let's look at a sample question. An architect is completing an adjacency diagram for a new high school in a rural community. The client has provided the following requirements. The playing fields will be used by the school and community for daytime and evening sporting events. Convenient access to the field should be provided to all visitors. The central atrium needs to be a key gathering space during school hours and will be used to host school and community related events in the evening. Additionally, it will serve as a pre-function space for events held in the auditorium. The restrooms need to be connected to both the gymnasium and central atrium. The office will provide faculty and student support throughout the school day. The main entry will be the secured point of entry for students and visitors. Drag the labels on the left into the appropriate bubbles to show the required programmatic relationships. To complete this bubble diagram, you'll need to understand the spatial relationships of the high school as they relate to the program and the client's requirements. The playing fields require convenient access for both daytime and evening activities, making the best location within close proximity to the school as well as the parking area. The central atrium should be located central to the major program spaces with a connection to the main entry for secured access for evening events. Since the central atrium is also a pre-function space for the auditorium, the spaces should be directly connected. The restrooms have a direct connection between the gymnasium and central atrium, while also being in close proximity to the auditorium for use during performances and events. The classroom's proximity to the office provides convenient access for faculty and student support throughout the school day. This is an AE level item requiring the analysis of horizontal functional relationships as they relate to the building program and client requirements. Ready to get started? Refer to the ARE handbook for a list of reference materials most often used to develop the questions included in this division. This is not an exhaustive list of all possible references, but a suggestion for further reading. And remember, lots of people are studying for the ARE right now, so join the conversation. You can stay on top of the latest news and connect with NCARB and your colleagues with these sites. Be sure to check out our ARE community created just for ARE 5.0 and take a look at our other ARE 5.0 division videos. Thanks for watching.